Hi everyone, today I'm going to be fitting a ME442 to my Mazda MX-5 Mary. So the reason I'm upgrading from a ME221 to an ME442 is I'm going to get onboard SD card logging, which is going to really help me at the track so that I can identify if there are any problems. For example, if there's something untoward happening, I'll be able to look through the logs and see what's happened. I'm going to get a onboard wideband, which means there won't be any ground offset problems. So the, the AFRs that the ECU is seeing are the same as what the gauge is reading. I'm going to be able to use CAN out. So that means I can run my CAN checked from the ECU. At the minute, I've got an adapter box for the ME221 and I'll be able to put sensors into the ME442 and then send them to the CAN check so I can see it all on my CAN check to monitor what's going on, which I'm super excited about. It's also got a whole bunch of other features like a sequential ignition and lots of other stuff that at the moment I'm not going to be using, but it's got, got huge uh, future proofing for this build, no matter what I decide to do with it. Let's remove the old ECU. So I'm now just gonna remove the cover from the top so I can take out the vacuum line and the old cable. I don't know where the lid to the new ECU is, so I'm gonna reuse it on, on that. I'm not even gonna bother changing the cases providing that it just fits. So I've already removed the map from this. With the ME442, I'm going to be able to copy the calibration tables and just hopefully put them straight into the 442 without too much bother. So I should be able to get home tonight, fingers crossed. I'm really grateful for being able to move over to a proper USB cable now. Gets rid of all those big connectors and mucking about all the time. So. The only thing that I haven't done is sorted out the can on this yet. I'm going to leave that because we're doing this again after hours. It's time to remove my old LC2 because I'm not going to need this anymore. It's been with me a long time. This has been in about three different cars. Never blown a single sensor. I am going to miss it, but onto bigger and better things. That's the controller part out. So there's my uh, end of my sensor, which is also a twat. Oh, there we go, because I'm pulling the wrong end of it. Goodness me. And there we go, which shall be reused for Lydia's car because we're peer pressuring her into turbocharging her car now. And so here's the other end, which will go into the ME442. So that's the ME442 installed. All I need to do now is connect the laptop up to it and load some of those calibrations. So I'm just gonna go grab the laptop. So we are about to get mapping. We're about to tune it. We're gonna map in, we're gonna put a pop and bang map on it. We're gonna page up over and over and over and over again, except I have no idea what I am doing. I've been given some rough instructions. Last time I was allowed behind a laptop in a car, about three days later, it knocked its tits off. So wish me luck. Uh, Jake, can you please turn the ignition on so I can import from calibration? So when I right click on certain tables, I'm able to import from the calibration that I have already downloaded from the old uh, ME221 into the new ME442. So we're now going to calibrate the throttle. So I have the throttle calibration wizard open. Uh, close the throttle. Now open the throttle fully. Happy days. There we go. 
and I'm going to click finish so you can let go now. Click finish and that is our throttle done. So let me find, so please depress the throttle fully. Great, yeah, I can see that that has just gone to 100%. So that's good. Oh, cool, you can load a base map just from the, that is so cool, I didn't know you could do that. You can load a base map straight from the, from Mighty itself, that's pretty awesome. I'm impressed. That saves me browsing on the internet, ending up in weird places in the dark web. So at each heading, just clicking through it and then right clicking and importing from the old calibration. So seems to be pretty easy. Unfortunately, uh, the, I wasn't able just to simply upload the map, but all the tables themselves are all related to one another. So we were able just to go through them one by one and just upload the old map. ALS, don't use that. Knock, don't use that. VVT, don't use that. Flex fuel, also don't use that. I think we are done. Jake, start it up. Happy days. Runs about as well as it normally does. So and unless you're at full send, when you're at full send, it runs great at idle. Not so much, but we'll work on that. So if you can kill it, Jake. So that's us done for this evening. I've just pulled the ME221 out. We've smashed the ME442 in. We've taken the LC2 out. We've smashed the cable for the LS 4.9 in, connected it up to the not to the wideband sensor that was already in there. James has been an absolute legend and sorted out my tail lights because they were in a sorry way. I had one tail light, I had one brake light, but uh, both of the connectors on the back of the lights were not working. So that's all done. Um, so we're all good. Excuse the uh, continuity error. Now that the ME442 is all installed, let's go for a test drive.
So thank you very much for watching today. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I'm really excited to see what I'm gonna be able to do with the ME442. It's got loads more scope that I can't wait to get my teeth into. Now, give us a like if you enjoyed watching this video. Tell us down in the comments what ECU that you guys are running and subscribe to us for more Mazda MX-5 content every single Friday. See you next time.